Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to do some simple animation and interactivity using JavaScript in an HTML5 project with Animate CC. Let's begin by creating a new document and make sure that you're using HTML5 Canvas. I'm also going to change the size to be larger because it's a lot more epic. So I'm going to use 960 by 540 pixels, which is a 16 by 9 format, which is a little bit nicer, more epic looking. Now, as soon as it opens up, it does kind of go off the stage a little bit. So I'm going to recenter that with Control-0. And that just makes it fit very nicely on the stage. Now, we need to begin by creating a simple line. So I'm going to change it to about a st stroke of 3 and give it a color. It doesn't really matter what it is, but I'll say it's kind of a greenish color for the ground and this will go straight across so hold down the shift key as you draw that line now I'm going to begin by calling that the ground and I'm going to lock that layer the reason we want to lock it is so that we can't interact with it and draw anything else on it now we want to draw our ball so I'm going to create a new layer for that call it ball and then click and drag holding down the shift key to make sure that you are constraining it to a circle. As soon as I've drawn that, I'm going to go ahead and delete the stroke that I have because I don't want that, and I just want the ball to be left behind. Now we need to convert this to a symbol by right-clicking and choosing Convert Symbol, or you can press F8. Now, when you create this symbol, we're going to call this our ball, and I can even call it Basketball. You'll notice that typically your registration is set to the upper left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and center it just because I kind of like that when I use balls. That way it, it makes sure it's, it's animating from the center point. And excellent, I've got that there now. Now this ball is basically going to fly in and bounce a couple places against this line and then come to a stop and then we'll replay that. Now an easy way to do this animation to save time is to use a preset. Although I must admit, these presets are not very good. Anyway, if you go to default presets in your motion presets folder, there's one called Bounce in 3D, and all we have to do is click Apply, and then that's there. Now, in order to move this and to make it even a little bit bigger, you can actually go to each endpoint and drag it out. So I'm going to drag it out so it's touching there, and then I'm going to click on that one and hopefully. If I get to the right place, I might have to go to the white arrow. There we go. Go to the white arrow. I'm going to move that up and take this one and move it down. Now I can also give that a little bit better arc, which is nice as well. So here's what happens if we watch this animation. Boom. You'll see it actually works out pretty well. Now notice that my line disappears if we watch this animation. The reason it does is because we created a single keyframe and when we created that motion tween it extended it out in this case to 75 frames. So we need to extend out the ground layer as well. Right click at the last frame underneath um, or on the ground layer and choose insert frame. This will extend that line all the way out. And you'll see we're, we're pretty good, but it's actually just slightly above. So either layer you need to move just slightly. Um, if I select the ball layer, then I can just take it up just slightly with uh, the arrow keys. That way it's hitting the, the um, line layer, but it's not going underneath it. That looks a little bit more accurate. Now we've created a very, very simple animation. Once again, use the white arrow in order to stretch out your animation just a little bit more if you want. There we go. And now you can see we're really filling up that space. Might even move that down because I want it to be a little bit further down. Oh! Get that one point. There we go. Now that's a little bit further down. Okay, now we need to do some interactivity as well. The first thing that we know that we're going to need is a play button. So I need to create a new layer for the buttons as well. And I'm going to click and drag a rectangle in the middle for my play button. Now just to make this a little different, I might choose a different background. So I know my play button is going to be green because that's play. 
pretty easy. I can keep the border on there or not, doesn't really matter. But as soon as you've drawn the graphics to create your play button, let's click on it or double click on it to make sure the whole thing is selected. And I'm going to press F8 to turn this into a button symbol. Now we're going to name this play button. <clears throat> now that I've got the play button symbol created, you double click on it to go inside the play button itself. Now all buttons need at least two states up and over. In order to create a new state there, we can either duplicate the state there or just right click at the over keyframe and choose insert keyframe and that will duplicate it as well. Now we want to change the settings of that just so that green looks a little bit different. So if we scroll back, we'll see oh, not enough difference between them. Let's make it a little bit more obvious. It's not my it's not a great looking button, that is for sure. But it's enough for government work. All right, now that we have our background, we want to create a new layer for our text. I'm going to click and drag a little box and type in play. Now this play can now go over the top of that text and if I scale it back so it kind of matches edge to edge, now we can use the center paragraph settings in order to get that to fit and of course we can change our size and our color so it will work well on that button. And that one actually looks pretty good so it's about centered at 32 points for this particular um, play button. Now we want to go back to our scene and we know this play button is actually going to be happening across our animation. Now because we don't want the play button to exist after we click on it, we want it to only exist for the very beginning. So after frame 1, I'm going to go to frame 2, right click and choose insert blank keyframe. This way it will hide the play button after and then when I get to the very very end it's going to stop and there we need to have a replay button. So an easy way to do this is to right click and choose insert blank keyframe and so now I have nothing to put there and now draw a new button just like we did. <clears throat> just like we drew our our um, original button. Now I'm going to go ahead and make mine a different color because the replay and the play I just want to be a different color. It'd be nice if I had them in the exact same spot but I don't really care about that right now. And we have to turn this into a symbol just like we did before. Now before we do that though I'm actually going to convert this to a movie clip symbol first and then in, um, make it into a button symbol. And you'll see why in just a second. This is going to be the replay button and I'm going to call it BG and that's going to be a movie clip. Now I'm going to um, convert it again to a symbol and this time it's going to be the replay button. Now if you double click on it you'll see that you actually have a symbol inside your button instead of it just being a shape. Now we could have created the button first then gone inside the button and converted this into a movie clip here. But the reason we've done this is so if I duplicate this to the next frame either by right clicking and choosing insert keyframe or by clicking and dragging with the alt key to duplicate the frame now I have the ability to apply filters and effects in order to adjust things like color. So maybe I could adjust my brightness up a little bit, and I could even add something like a drop shadow to it. This way I could create the effect of a button that was being hovered over, which is a little bit more um, interesting visually than the simple button that we had in the other one. Now let's create our text for replay. scale that so it fits over it and it's going to be white. That looks pretty good at 32 size, 32 pick size. 
and I'm ready to go back to the main layer. Now, once again, what we have right now is an animation that goes across all 75 layers, or 75 frames. At frame 1, I have a play button, and then there's a blank keyframe, and then at frame 75, I have a replay where we can replay our movie. Let's go ahead and save this, and I'm going to call it um, Bouncing Ball Interactive. Excellent. Now that I've got this here, we need to add some interactivity to it. So we're going to create a new layer. This time, it, this layer is going to be called Actions. Now, I want to select the button, go up to my Actions panel with the F9 keyboard, keyboard shortcut, make that a little bit smaller. And an easy way to add code is to go to the code snippets. Make sure that you're in the HTML5 canvas. And I want to do a couple things. Number one, oop, I want to make sure I'm on the actions layer. And I want to double click on stop this keyframe. The first thing that we're doing is stopping the keyframe so it won't continue, or the movie, so it won't continue. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that to the end by holding down the Alt key when I drag that keyframe. That way we know it stopped at the beginning and stopped at the end. You'll also see now in my actions panel, I have code both places, at frame 1 and at frame 75, which is really kind of cool. Now at frame 1, I'm going to go back, select my button. My button needs to be given an instance name up here, which is called play button, underscore btn. And I'm going to attach the code to it, which says click to go to in, uh, frame and play. So I'll double click on that. And what we're going to do is change this to just play instead of go to and play. So right now I'm not going to change anything else, but we'll fix that stuff later. Now I'm going to jump to the end. I'm going to select the replay button. Call that replay underscore btn. And then attach code to that. Whoops, I need to be able to see that window. There it is. I'll go to frame and play, and so I'm going to tell this to go to and play at zero, or actually I guess it could be one, and I think that's really all I need. Let's save it and test with control enter, and we'll see if we've gotten it to work so far. I can click play, it plays the movie, it gets to the end, I click replay, and it skips frame one. So here's something to know about. It can be a little bit frustrating. I might switch this to zero and see if that works. I'm not sure. Okay, yay, we can go to frame zero, so that's good. That's actually a quick fix for this. If frame one is where it has code, so I need it to actually go to before frame one, and frame zero does exist. So an easy way to make this work is by telling it to go to and play zero. Now there's a couple things that I want to, to change as well. If we look at our first code, you'll see that it has this play button, add event listener, click, go to and play from frame, bind this. Now what this is called is a function and event listener pair. The function is right here, and the event listener is, of course, this. An event listener is added to an object, and then we have to tell it what type of function that we're listening to, in this case, a click. Then we tell it what function to run, and we're binding the function to that event listener. Now, we get to name our functions whatever we want. So I'm going to call this play movie. So we have to make sure that both are the same, though. Play movie. Make sure that they're completely the same with uppercase or lowercase. Some of the other things like this function have to be the um, what we would expect to find in Flash. For the other function, I'm going to call this replay movie. And a simple way to do it, of course, is always to copy and paste whenever you can. And once that's there, you should be able to save your movie and test it out and you should have a bouncing ball. The only thing else you can do to improve this is go into your original symbol, 
and possibly replace your original basketball by going into that 